Asia. Pop 40. First off, let me let me preface uh, this conversation with uh, thank you, all, all, all of our viewers and listeners. Once again, welcome to another episode of us reaching out to a great artist, either halfway or all the way around the world. And today, my goodness, it is a personal honor uh, to be able to speak with DJ, producer, uh, godfather of trans music. We have Paul Oakenfold. Thank you for joining us here on Asia Pop 40. Woohoo! Thank you. Once again, thank you for having me and um, I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you being here and uh, giving us the time. But before we get into anything else, Paul, I have to first ask you, I was watching, or should I say, viewing your Instagram story this morning. Was Hollywood burning this morning? Sure was. So where I shot that video that you guys saw was from my backyard. Oh. And, And I literally woke up, went to... I have a lemon, believe this true story, I have a lemon tree in my garden. So in every morning I go, I take lemons, I have lemon juice, um, hot water, very simple, it clears your body. And as I walked out, that hill was burning. And before before um, the fire brigade got there, you could see, see it was starting to develop. And then all you could hear in Hollywood was sirens as all the fire brigade were coming and they did tremendous job. I mean, they, 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 you know, the area that we live in, God forbid anything happens like that, is really dangerous in the neighborhood. So they took care of it. They've done an amazing job. And, and I was standing there watching it, filming it in my backyard. It is the season of uh, wildfires in California and it's been getting worse and worse every year. But do you know, what was the cause of this particular incident? No, I mean, ge- generally, you don't. I mean, then then they, they the fire brigade stay there. I, I mean, I only know this because I'm very aware of, we have, as you said, we have a lot of fires. Yeah. So they look into it, whether it was arson, whether it was this, whether it was that. But okay. the main thing is they put it out and they put it out quickly. Okay, great. And it's good to know that you are uh, doing good, uh, that that didn't affect your side of the hill. And uh, love that whole routine in the morning, by the way. Fresh lemon juice in the morning. That sounds like something everyone's got to get Very simple. A lemon from the tree, squeeze it, hot water, stir it, and you will feel good. It will cleanse you, clear you, and then you're ready for your big breakfast, whatever you you have. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Taiwan right now, and oh, we're tiny little sorry. island off the coast of China. You've been here, actually, and uh, let's jump to that, actually. I remember I went to your gig in 2002, and that was uh, that was quite an experience for me. And for everyone who's watching or listening to this, um, I remember that the, you were supposed to come in at 10, and uh, at around 9.50, you were seen hanging around with everybody else at the back of the venue and you started your old mini signing party and you're you're a man of the people that's for sure you know if i if i'm coming all that way i really am thankful so i do like to get involved hang out with a promoter meet the people yeah um listen listen to them it's, it's very important and and just be a part of them. And my record company, Perfecto, we've signed artists from all around the world. So I always encourage people to give me music. Hey, how are you doing? How are you guys doing there? Are you, you okay? I mean, is it, you finding it as difficult as, as, as we are here? I mean, we're, we're in a really bad place here. Yeah. How's things there? Because they say Asia is a lot better now. Uh, but is that true? Yep, uh, we have uh, two dates just uh, north of uh, 400 uh, confirmed cases, most of them cured, and uh, Taiwan is considered a little safe haven away from the pandemic. But of course, we keep close watch of what's going on in the States all the time, and you're right, uh, it is uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's we're, a bit we're of a mess. 70, so you're 400 people a day, we're 70,000. Oh no, we're only 400 confirmed cases all together so we have one or two a day now well listen i'm coming to the airport tomorrow i'm flying <laughs> over sleep on your couch 
You or CJ, I'm sleeping on your couch, all right? Get ready. <laughs> You're more than welcome to come and have a drink with me and CJ, my producer. I'll, I'll, I'll set up my studio at one of your houses and I'm moving in, so get ready. And you know what? I, I believe that you do that because you're known as uh, one of the DJs who really loves traveling and you love playing in different countries and, and events. Uh, you've been to the Great Wall of China. You've been to Base Camp Everest. Uh, you are a man, a DJ of the people. You love people. You love making connections through music yeah. with people. <laughs> yeah, I, you're right. And I do love traveling and I learned from my father who was... Who, whose grandfather worked in travel and I always used to sit there as a kid and he'd tell these wonderful stories about go see the world, learn, listen, be educated, experience. And and he, I went on a few trips with my grandfather and before he died and then my father on many trips. And then when I become an, a, a, of age where I could go on my own with a backpack or where now I, for many, many years I've traveled, as a DJ, uh, I've really enjoyed it, and I, I'd recommend it to to you, to your viewers, to to everyone. It's, it's a great way to be a part of a world community, and what with what's going on now, obviously that's that's not going to happen for a while. Right, um, but we can still connect. We can still connect online, like we're doing now. We can still connect through music. Uh, in fact, that's the reason we have Paul here today is because you dropped the new single with Louis Fonzi, and uh, it's called "The World Can Wait." Now, uh, how did this collaboration happen? When did you spawn the idea of this collaboration? It was, the song came about through um, a collaboration with myself and a, a few songwriters in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, it was a song that was very meaningful in terms of the lyric uh, and what the story of the song is about. How uh, we should help support and the world can wait and, and you should think about family and friends. And it, it was, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it was an album track. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then suddenly it, it became apparent that we are in this place where we're all in this together and the world can wait. With a pause has been put on life for everyone. And Luis Fonzi, I love his vocal. I love what he's done. I'm a fan of his. Um, I got connected through his record company, Universal. Mm -hmm. He loved the idea of the collaboration. It was a different world for him because he's never ventured into the electronic world. Um, and we did the song and then it was like, well, this is perfect to release now. Why don't we put this out now and hopefully put a smile on people's faces. And music always gives you something. And with this track, with this video, it's about people on the, on the first response on the front line. Yep. Uh, and we've just released it. It's doing incredibly well, uh, I, I, and you know, we, we it, it puts a smile on your face, and hopefully, it helps people when they're going through a hard time. Yep. And for everyone listening to this or watching this, please go check out the music video. Uh, it's made and dedicated to the first the frontline workers, and it's very touching. Um, it's something that I think we should all get into. <laughs> We're very aware. Frontline people generally are army, police, uh, medical. Uh, medi well, we're not not even not even so, so much medical. Medical usually is second line. So it's the army and the police, fire brigade. Then okay. what happens is then the second response is the medical, right? Yeah, because yeah. if anything goes wrong, then you go to hospital. But now we've thrust these people have been thrust into the front lines. Ah, yes. So, and, and there's a lot of other people on the front lines. There's people who are still working, a, a bus driver, people getting people to work, people on the tube, on the train, going to a supermarket, you've got to leave. There's other people on the front lines and it's dedicated, and of course, all the services, right? You're it's right. dedicated, yeah. to both, but in a much bigger way. So that we recognize that in the video. 
Yeah, you, you know what? You mentioned something I never thought of. Uh, that's true. People who usually aren't in the front line. Teachers, you know, service industry people, medical yeah. workers. Now all of a sudden, without really training or mentally being prepared for this, they're thrusted into the front yeah. line. And that's why we commend their courage. Yeah, the front line is you get you get it. You go to hospital. You don't speak to, to the army, the police, or the fire brigade. You go straight to the hospital and they're the front line. You, you know, or you go to work because you have to pay your bills. That front line is that bus driver or train driver that puts himself in harm's way to get you to work. Yeah. You need groceries. That person who's ringing it up or, 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 or taking care of the supermarket, they're on the front line and they have a family. It's, it's difficult for everyone and we're in this together. So that's what the song is about. Mm, that's why I love this song, and I think everyone should at least go take a, take a look at the music video. But for a lot of your longtime fans, Paul, we're wondering whether or not there's going to be a trans remix of this one. Well, <laughs> there's a trance remix, there's a house remix, there's I've been working on a lot of music that's cinematic, yep. and the remix package just dropped on Friday, so it's just come out. Uh, last Friday, so all the, all the all the club mixes are there, and then there's a second package with even more club mixes. But I didn't want to focus on clubs because there are none. Yeah. I wanted to focus on who these people were and how we owe them a lot. So that's why we release this version first, and all the club mixes come after. Okay, great. Which means we get more time to enjoy different variations of the song. We're absolutely loving it, Paul. Thank you for putting this project together. Uh, are there any other projects in the Pipeworks that you're working on right now? Yeah, they, there's, there's two things. Finishing the album, uh -huh. which I'm very close to doing, I'm very happy with. It's very cinematic because I work a lot on writing music for film. It's very uh, down tempo, it's song based, and there's some great artists. And then I just signed on U2, the band, just launched in America mm -hmm. on Sirius XM. They now have their own channel. And I've got the Saturday night, Friday night and Saturday night slot where I play dance remixes of my stuff that I've done with them, but also a lot of other bands, a lot of music that you're probably familiar with, but you've never heard dance remixes of. So. Uh, I'm I'm enjoying that, so I'm busy. Yeah. I'm at home. I don't go out. I really take this seriously, as should your viewers. And it's difficult for all of us. We're all in the same boat, but you know, let's help one another, and that's that's really really important. That's right. That's right. And uh, this project, by the way, that Paul is talking about, Sirius XM Discotech, uh, and it's on almost every other day. So starting from this Friday, uh, go check it out. You can find it all on Paul's socials. And you're getting you two, the band, to work with you. Of course, these guys are longtime friends of yours, right? Yeah, I, I toured with them well, many, many, many years times. ago. Yeah. <laughs> Support act and remix their stuff. And I mean, I'm very lucky. I mean, first of all, great guys and what an amazing band and a great show. So I liven it up with discotheque at the weekends and people can dance wherever they are around the world and in their living rooms uh, and have a good time. Yeah, a little a little uh, history for the younger viewers. When uh, Paul was a young buck uh, in his mid-20s, so about two years ago... Uh <laughs> he loves it, right? Hello. Uh, Hello. He, Paul remixed the song from U2 and did so well that was he was invited by U2 to, to tour with them and that's when you guys first made that bond. But of course over the years you've worked with some of the biggest names in the industry, you know, Madonna, some of your early friends in music were, you know, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Salt and Pepper. Um, so all, all these years, Paul, working with uh, some of these veterans in music and of course seeing the fluidity, uh, the organic growth of music. What do you think of pop music now? What do you think of electronic music now? I said, that's a very interesting question because um, I grew up in a world of diversity in mm. terms of music. So you listen to in Britain growing up in London on Radio One, you'd listen to 
Bob Marley, next to Run DMC, next to Madonna, next to U2, next to Prodigy, Chemical Brothers, and Underworld. So it was it, it, it was it was wonderful because your knowledge of music, your expression through music, um, would, would would be different. Mm-hmm. And now that you living in America for many many years, you listen to music and. It's separated. So you want to listen to pop music, you go to one channel. You want to listen to hip hop, you're on one channel. Yeah. Rock, dance. And I don't think that does anyone any good. I think what's wonderful about music is diversity yeah. and supporting new young talent. I mean, where's music going to go if we're not supporting young new talent? Where's music going to go in, in le- unless, as an artist, you push yourself, you Look, not everyone's going to like the collaboration with Louis Fonsi, right? Mm, mm. It's a little bit edgy, different, because the uh, the pop mix is not where I sit. But it's it, it's it's as an artist you grow, as a person you grow, and that's what's wonderful about music. That's what's wonderful about an individual. You grow, you learn, and put that into your everyday experience. Put that into your life. Put that into your job. And that's what music is about. And now you don't see that as much as as much as I think we should. It'd be great if you could go to one place and listen to all kinds of music. We're very glad that uh, you are also involved in projects to uh, nurture the next generation of DJs currently, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that next generation of DJ producers, which is obviously fundamentally what I am um, is important to support, encourage, be aware of. That's what I was saying at the top of the interview that I'll spend time before or after the show in, um, and prior encouraging people, you know, if, if that's you, then, you know, I sign people from all around the world on my label, from New Zealand to, to Russia, to Israel, to London, uh, you know, and, and why not more places in Asia? Why not? Yes. Why, you know, why not in your local town, in your local city? I mean, I, I'm here to give people that opportunity and, uh, and release a record globally and support it. All right, one last question for our producer then, uh, CJ. He wants to uh, nerd out a little bit and ask you what your studio setup is like. Do we go and have a look? Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. I, I, shall I give you a little tour? Yeah, please. I want to see. Uh, can I? Can I also see the lemon tree? What lemon tree? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see my lemon tree. I could take you out there. Nice. We get, let's go. We, we... So here we go. So can you see me? I can right. see you. Oh, nice. All right. So I'm having my garden done up. Mm-hmm. And then here is the lemon tree. <laughs> it? I love it. Yes, I see it. My goodness. So, there's my lemon tree. <laughs> so, and I'm having my backyard done. There's the Hollywood. So, uh, can, you see, can you see the Hollywood sign? That is a marvelous view. Yes, I can see it. All right. So I'm briefly going to show you the studio. You got, what have I got? 30 seconds, a minute. We, we've got however much time you're willing to give us in the studio. All right, so we're going to go down into the studio. Let's do it. Twice when uh, I played at the Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. Uh, all right, stick with me. I'm walking backwards, so. I'm watch sure out! I'm watch your steps. I right. love the decor in the house. My goodness. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let me uh, put some lights on so you can see my record collection. My goodness, that is glorious. You can see some of the guitars that I use in the corner. You, You can see some of the movies on the wall that I've worked on from Matrix, yes. Noble Sun. Yeah. Uh, then you can see Shrek 2. Mm-hmm. These are movies that I've done. Collateral. Collateral, yeah, that was Tom Cruise. Born Identity. 
Uh, and the first film that I ever done and I scored was Swordfish. Oh, that's right. Yes. DJ. Then we go to the DJ setup, which is turntables, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Awards. And then this is where I sit and make noise uh, to screens, keyboards, blah, blah, blah. There you go. That is that's beautiful. It. That's it. I mean, when I was working on these, when I was working on these films, um, I had a whole mixing board set up here. You can see above the, where I put all the sound and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, now it's turned into more of a writing suite, and it's really good. I really enjoy working down here. So yeah, that's it. That is a beautiful working space, and uh, it is a very, I, I guess, it's a very iconic Paul Oakenfold working space. So everyone, you get, to, you got to see Paul's home today. I think this has got to be exclusive. Uh, so it before is. we wrap up, I want to remind everybody that uh, aside from the single "The World Can't Wait" and the many variations uh, of remixes coming on, uh, Paul's also got a whole new album that's on the way. Uh, make sure you stay close to his uh, Sirius XM and uh, other radio work that he can. Continues to pump out, and uh, let's not forget, Paul. You're celebrating your birthday before the month is over, right? <laughs> I was trying to keep that quiet. <laughs> Hello, I was like, you know, I think I'm gonna miss this year out. I'm like, you know, I don't want to celebrate every year. Let's just celebrate every other year. All right. Well, I just want to say a pretty happy birthday to you, and thank you uh, so much for taking time, this yeah. interview with us. Yeah, thank you, and uh, much appreciated, and of course. Uh, everyone who's out there, stay safe. You know, really important that you're safe and look after yourself. And uh, thanks so much for your support. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye, Paul. Hi, it's Paul Oakenfold here, and you're listening to Asia Pop 40. Asia Pop 40.